I just never let my body <laughs> be with me. And because I separated myself from my body, I always saw like, this is me, this is my body. So I would have people respect me, but I, I didn't really care much about people respecting my body in that way. Cause I was just so used to it being torn apart. I let the world teach me how to treat my body. And so when I saw everybody else tearing it apart, I was like, okay, well that's how I'm gonna get something out of it. I'm gonna keep tearing it apart until I realized this is not working. <laughs> it's been 24 years and this ain't worked. So something gotta give girl. Are we focused? I think we're focused. I think we're good. What's up, it's your boy Tariq Ali, and welcome back to your boy Shano. How you doing, how you feeling? I'm feeling good today. I'm feeling good because this is so random. I'm in my bedroom, um, and I was like, let me film this video, girl. Like, it doesn't have to be perfect, casual, okay? There was a comment on my last video. There was a person that asked me how I built a new relationship with my body. My last video was about my fitness and wellness journey and how I came to where I am today. Clearly, people saw my physical, saw my body, saw my abs, saw my arms, saw all of this results. Everybody was asking me all these questions of how, how, how. I was like, oh my gosh, we need a video, we need a video, we need a video. And I made that video. Half of the video is me talking about the process before the gym, before a diet, before even the goal of losing weight. That video I posted is only 20 minutes. I filmed an hour and a half worth of content. I talked for an hour and a half because if you're not new to me, then you know I've talked about my body dysmorphia on my channel a lot, alone and with other people, with psychiatrists. If you're not familiar, you can go to the Body in Health series on my channel in the playlist section. Because for me, it wasn't a simple on a Monday, oh, I wanna lose 30 pounds. It was a really big deal to me to get to this point, and so I talked about it a lot when filming. But when I went to edit, I really didn't think people I kind of shelled up and I was a little scared. I was like, I don't think people will be interested in that. Like people are coming for my body and they want to see how I got the abs and all that. I really felt pressure to like answer all of the questions that were really tied to the physical aspects and the body image side of it. Um, and I completely kept all of the other things to, like I shared it in the past video, but I kind of kept it to myself um, because I just didn't think people cared. But thank you guys for letting me know that you do care. Um, and there is a community out there that understands what I'm talking about. I kind of thought that stepping into this fitness world and health and like just everything working out and health and all of that, I felt like people don't want to talk about mental health. <laughs> like, So I am coming to you now to say I am sorry. In my last video, I talked about how I had to apologize to my body and how my body took some time to forgive me. And it was just the entire process, but I didn't really get into the nitty gritty of that process. So today I want to talk about that process. Um, and yeah, that's what this video is about. <laughs> We're not drinking wine today, okay? Because I kind of stopped drinking. Um, it's, it's more of a spiritual and a mental and emotional cleanse. Um, so we're gonna be drinking water. <laughs> this video is not about me not drinking wine right now. But it's not a long-term thing. I think it's just, I just operate off a of feeling. Oh, the water, you wanna know what water we're drinking? Purified drinking water. Generic, girl. It's water, girl. The only water I won't drink is Dasani. I'm sorry. I'll drink Dasani if it's all you got and it's a summer day and it's cold. If it's room temperature, ugh. Ugh. Why would you pass me a Dasani? Disrespectful. So Azio asked, how did you learn to listen to your body? I think there's this widespread no pain, no gain narrative that's not very healthy and puts you in a me against my body mindset. Has this been an issue to you in your journey? I would like to hear more about that. Okay, so this was the process for me. Growing up very, very early, um, trigger warning, S.A. I'm not even gonna say it, cause I'm like, <laughs> I don't, not to laugh, I'm sorry, that's how I express myself. Um, just, it's a trigger warning, and I, I was about to say it, and I'm like, trigger warning, S-A. And if you need that trigger warning, then you know what S-A is, okay? But I'm about to, I'm about to go there, girl. I'm about to go there, stay strong. Um, I'm gonna I'm try to stay strong myself. Okay, um, when I was very young, I was assaulted um, continuously for years um, by a family member, okay? We got that out the way, right? Okay. <laughs> sorry. This is how I deal with my trauma. I'm sorry. It's just how I express myself. My therapist says it's okay. Okay, so don't judge me. But anyways, um, so this was the first part of me mentally disconnecting from my body um, because I was a baby. Like I was in elementary school and it was before fourth grade. Um, it's, it's still a little choppy in my head, but I know um, I was really young. Like I was a toddler young. Like I was very young. I just saw it in a way where I had to give 
my body to this person. I saw it as me having to give my body up to someone else to make them happy and to receive love and attention um, in a house where there was 11 people and I was the, one, the second to youngest. Um, and so I just saw that giving my body away was my means of getting love and attention, boom. At that point, when I was really little, I wasn't that big, but as I got older, um, I started to gain a lot of weight. The doctor told me I was obese. Um, and then I had people making fun of me all of the time. And so my way of not internalizing that was separating myself from my body and in a way where they're making fun of this and not me. Like I can't control my body. Like, and, and I was so young, like I, I was not thinking about dieting and working out, but it, it just was who I was. Like I'm eating, I'm eating what my parents give me at that. I don't even go out to Starbucks. I can't pay for nothing. I'm just me. Um, and so mentally, I separated myself from my body and I saw that people would attack that and that helped my confidence because I'm like, oh, I have no control over that. That's not me. So I separated myself from my body. That was the second thing. And I think that those two experiences um, in the mindset, uh, the survival mode, you know, all I wanted was love and acceptance. And I saw that with my body, I couldn't have that. And I think that mentally, I separated myself so that I could deserve it despite my body. And so I made it something else. Um, so whenever I wanted something from it, like I said in my past video, every, every time I tried to work out, I would bully myself, you know, like stop eating this fat ass or like pushing myself to work out when I didn't want to, pushing myself to do a diet that I hated, um, just always pushing and pushing and pushing um, and talking down on it um, in a way where I would look in the mirror and be like, ugh, I don't like my stomach. I gotta go to the gym, I gotta go to the gym. So it's like every time you don't like something or I didn't like something about my body, I attach that to the gym. And you see that, that, negative, that negative connection that I had with the gym because of the negative connection I had with myself and how I was treating myself. And I also noticed just with, you know, as I started to grow up and I started to become, you know, sexually active and I would have, you know, relations with people or sex. And there would be times where I wasn't like completely un I was uncomfortable. It doesn't even need to be on a spectrum, girl. I was uncomfortable and I kind of didn't want to have sex or I knew I, I rather not, like I'd rather just lay here. But because the other person wanted sex, um, because of what the SA did to me in my earlier childhood, you know, I have to give this to get love and affection or the things I want. I sometimes would just do it, you know? Um, and um, I found myself in experiences where I didn't really want to do something with my body um, but I did it anyway because of what I wanted afterward. I was actually using my body as currency in a way where I'll give you my body if you give me this. And to bring this all back around to your question of the no pain, no gain, um, and the mindset of me against my body, um, I had to dig deep into my own trauma and my own childhood and my own experience to see why that mindset was so like burned into my brain. Now it is a narrative that is on social media or in the fitness world in general, like stop being lazy, put that donut down and go to the gym. Um, but I think that it, it's a little harder. Um, I don't say harder, it's, it's, it's a bit more intricate and it takes a little bit more work for people with body dysmorphia and people with experiences similar to mine where it's been ingrained into your DNA for your survival mode. Your survival mode included you giving your body away or giving your body up or not having any agency over your body or any respect for your body. Um, and so I had to dig into my own trauma to get rid of that. Um, and, and not get rid of, I don't wanna say that because I, I don't ever wanna have a goal of getting rid of. I wanna get to the goal of working with and if it fades, it fades. Um, so I, I, I focus more on working with. Um, and my therapist actually helped me with that. It was like, I would notice things about myself and I'm like, oh, I need to fix that. And she was like, before we even get to, like before you get to fixing, there, you don't have to solve everything. You're insecure. Okay, you don't have to move on to being confident. You're insecure about this. Okay, one, accept that and then maneuver with that. So if you know you're insecure about money and then somebody says something about money, you get upset, you'll know now with that self-awareness, oh, I'm insecure about money. Maybe they didn't mean it like that. Let me ask. Um, and so it even helps you with communication and let's oh, see, I'm going on the tangent, but girl, that's another video. Okay, but anyway, <laughs> so yes, I will say with the no pain, no gain narrative and the, um, the me against my body mindset, that's how it, I, I combated that. I had to dig into my own trauma and see um, why I really thought that I had to push myself 
um, in order to get something from my body. And because I separated myself from my body, I always saw like, this is me, this is my body. So if I go to the gym every day, two weeks, and then I look at my body, right? And I'm like, you're not fucking changing. So I would just go to bullying, like, you know, you're fat or like, lose weight. Like, why aren't you losing weight? I, I did this, I did that, I did that. And my body, like, she don't deserve this. <laughs> like, you know, and, and, and even with sex, it's like, oh, I want this dude to like me. Okay, let him do this, let him do this. Okay, or let's do this, let's do this. Like, I just never let my body <laughs> be with me. Um, and I would have people respect me, but I, I didn't really care much about people respecting my body in that way. Um, Cause I was just so used to it being torn apart. Um, and so I let the world teach me how to treat my body. Um, and so when I saw everybody else tearing it apart, I was like, okay, well, that's how I'm going to get something out of it. That's how I'm going to get something out of it. I'm going to keep tearing it apart. I'm going to keep tearing it apart until I realized this is not working. <laughs> it's been 24 years and this ain't worked. So something got to give, girl. Um, so when I dig deep into my trauma, I saw why I operated in that way, why I thought I always had to give something to get. Um, and I saw my body as currency, I had to sit back and realize um, I am my body. We are one, we are together. This is mine, this is mine. Hmm. Okay, I think I'm having a moment. This is my body. And even when I say it now, I'm affirming still. It's still, prog like I'm still working on it, like it's not, something that goes away in a month or three. And I know that may not give you peace, but girl, we got to work on it. <laughs> um, but even me just saying that I felt so powerful because I've been really respecting my body and not doing anything with it that I don't want to do and that it doesn't want to do. Um, and which brings me to the next question where you ask, how did you learn to listen to your body? Um, and, I, and I think it's way simpler than you would think. Um, it's just that we, we aren't taught, you know, so social society is very people pleasing um, in a way where you don't want to make people feel bad. You don't want to make people think this or do that. And you want to have manners, especially me being raised by Southern African-American family. Whenever I felt like somebody was asking me of something um, and I would be OK after, like it wouldn't kill me then I'll be like, okay. And that's without even taking a second to think about what I want. You know, are you okay with this, Tariq? You know, do you want to do that? Um, I never took a moment to really ask myself. It would just go, hey, let's do this. And I'd be like, oh, I want that, okay. Yeah, let's do it. I would never sit back and be like, am I okay with this? Am I comfortable with this? Even with that old mindset that I have where I separated myself from my body, like I said, instead of trying to fix that, I worked with it. And that's why I said I went to my body and I apologized. So that, so when I wasn't sure, I asked my body. I'm like, do you want to have sex with this person? And usually, you know, I would ask it, do you want to have sex? It's like, no. And I'm like, okay, well then no. I don't care how fine this person is. I don't care if it's their last night in my city, girl. I don't care if this is somebody from 10 years ago. I, it doesn't matter. If your body is telling you no, listen. It's a no, babe. It's a no. And you know, you may even say one thing, you feel it. So you're not really tricking anyone but yourself because you feel it and you know. Um, and that's just one example. More examples is like when I would eat certain things and my body would react and tell me it doesn't feel good. I would eat so much dairy and then be so lethargic and so sl like sluggish and just not feel my best afterwards. And I'll be like, oh, that's just because I ate dairy. Like, you know, that's just what it does. No, that don't, it don't do that to everybody, girl. <laughs> it does that to your body and your body is telling you, hey, you know, I know you like dairy, but it, it makes us a little weak. And that's why everybody has different allergies. You can eat a peanut, some people can't, you know? And your body will tell you, girl, we can't eat that. Like we will pass out. Some people can eat it, you can't. I think when you remove yourself from this um, group think or this, there's a so uh, sociology word that I'm trying to think of where you try to assimilate or just be like everyone else in society because that's what we're taught, you know? Blend in, be like everyone else. I think when you remove yourself from that and realize that you're the only person with your body and you're the only one who knows it as good as you do, 
Um, you know what certain foods do to you. You know how certain diets make you feel. Does it make you feel good? You know, some people thrive on certain diets. Some people don't. What works for another person may not work for you. Um, and I think that's a huge part of listening to your body is paying attention to how your body reacts. That is its way of speaking. Okay, so if you eat something and you vomit right after, it's telling you, girl, you probably shouldn't eat that. Just how everyone has different preferences with like liquor and alcohol. You know, they're like, oh, vodka does this to me. And we'd be like, really, girl, don't do that to me. Or Hennessy does it. Your body will tell you, girl. <laughs> Your body literally tells you more than um, we've ever paid attention to. But I think now that I've offered this to you, you're going to start seeing that. Um, you're wondering why you're so tense every time you go to have sex with that one person. It's because your body doesn't want to have sex with them, girl. Like, <laughs> it's listen to your body and know that it can't speak English, okay? It speaks to you and shakes, shivers, um, feelings. You wake up, you feel heavy. Why do you feel heavy? That's your body telling you that you're emotional. There's a lot going on, you know? So it, listen to it in that way. Um, and, and that's more mental, but if you want to get to the fitness side of it and the workout side of it, um, whenever it comes to working out or the gym, if something hurts, I'm stopping. Ever since I went up to my body and I apologized to my body, and I said, you know, for 23 years, I did not see you a part of this. You know, I didn't see you a part of this. Um, and I'm sorry because I've treated you like a reject and the ugly duckling my entire life. I've bullied you, I've talked shit about you, I've given you to other people when you did, you asked me not to, um, and I've just used you as currency instead of respecting you. And I had to go to my body and apologize in that way. And ever since I apologized to my body, I now see my body um, like another person. Um, so I talk to it. I apologize when I do something wrong. Like I've been really clumsy lately. I'm, I'm pretty clumsy in a way where I'll just like walk into walls and I'll like sometimes hit my foot on stuff just out of me just like not paying attention. I mean, I just never paid any mind because it's like, yeah, it hurts, but like, okay, you'll be fine. Like it's just, you hit the wall, you know? But like, this is my body. Like, and I gotta take care of it. Like, I, I don't know. Sometimes we just treat our bodies like old pairs of shoes and we have to realize that in 50 years, we will have the same body and that shoulder will hurt because you didn't take care of it before. And also it doesn't deserve that. Even aside from, you know, you could benefit from this if you take care of your body. On the other side, it's just you, your body doesn't deserve that. Treat your body how you would like other people to treat your body. Um, and so I am really big on that now. So whenever I'm not sure, or if I'm doing something that can harm my body or that, is, that, that plays a part with my body, anything with my body, I ask my body first and I let it respond. To end this video, I really just want to say that it is a process um, and you have to be really gracious with yourself and you may have to go to your body and apologize. You may have to go to your body and listen and say, what, when did I do you wrong? Or why don't we get along? Or like, why don't I like you? You know, um, and just be honest about that and write that down. You know, maybe it is the Instagram pictures. Okay, now you know what you need to do. You know, maybe it is your mom because she talked about your body your entire life. Maybe it's your ex-girlfriend that constantly made comments about your body um, and told you that you needed to lose weight because before that, you never had a problem with your body. Like, you know, it was just what it was. Um, so I think you have to first go to your body and ask questions and listen and talk back, you know? And that helps me. Sometimes I, I literally talk to myself. Um, and I'm not saying talk to myself like, hmm, you look really good. I mean, like, I'll really be like, are you okay? I'm not too sure. Something about that just made me very uncomfortable. You know what? I think it's because, like, hey, let people call you crazy. Or you could do it in your privacy. Who gives a damn? The goal here is to have a <laughs> better relationship with yourself and with your body and whatever you're trying to do here. So when you keep that in mind and you have tunnel vision with that goal, Everything everybody else saying, because at the end of the day, I have to live in my body. They don't. So say what you want. And I spent my entire life having a horrible relationship with my body. And I'm not going to let anybody else get in the way of that, of that anymore. Um, and it's not perfect for me right now. Like, it, I didn't make it to the other side. It's still an everyday journey for me. Um, but it's a fight. Um, everyday journey. Everyday fight. You know what I meant. 
Um, but it, it's a fight that I'm willing to fight because where I am now, I would not trade this for the world. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. And I have my moments, but I'm happy. Um, and I'm loving myself. And so I encourage all of you to love yourself and, you know, talk to your body and love your body. So that's it for this video. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any other questions, please let me know in the comments or you can uh, follow me on Instagram. Please follow me on Instagram. Um, and you can ask me there. <laughs> also follow my TikTok. Follow me everywhere, girl. Oof, I gotta pay my bills. Love you guys. Have a great day. <laughs> Just being honest, okay? I love you guys and I hope you have a great day.